We welcome you to this week's class and hope all is well as we, for one more week, say Merry Christmas and we look to the symbol of the star and that great connection to us in our journey of faith, that door to get closer in our relationship with God. So this is a reminder that Jesus is always there waiting for you and hopefully you're taking advantage of your faith and each day as an opportunity to grow in that relationship as we look to Christmas and the birth of the Savior of the world and are extremely thankful and grateful for everything that God has given us. So just to look back, we continue to say Happy New Year and think back to that beautiful feast day of Mary, the Mother of God, and hoping that you guys are continuing in your prayers to her as well, the ultimate saint and role model for us to say yes to God. And we continue to wish you a Happy New Year. And just a quick reflection on your New Year's resolution. Again, you should always set these in your life. We're going to move on to the season of Lent here next month already, where we'll have goals there. But just in general, again, what are those big things that you need to work on at school, at home, and at church? So just to connect to myself, two of the goals I've set this year are to, uh, for my faith, to say a rosary every day and... I have stuck to that promise here so far, so that's been a, a good start to my year. And at school and at home, my biggest goals are just to stay more organized. So I did spend a considerable amount of time cleaning my desk and office uh, this past week, which I should take a picture and share with you guys next week. Hopefully I can keep it up. Uh, it's a good feeling to walk into my office knowing that it has been cleaned and is organized to go. So that's my goal there. And you guys should set ones yourself. So for opening prayer today, we're going to continue to use our acronym to tap God on the shoulder to thank, ask, and pray. So here we go. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything you have given us as we continue to progress through this Christmas season. Everything that you have given us is indeed a blessing, and we are forever thankful. We take this moment just to to say thank you for specific things in our life that bring us happiness and blessings. We thank you for the gift of life. We pray for our family. We thank you for them, for the opportunity today to learn more about you in this lesson. We thank you for all the strength and protection and guidance and care that you have given us. And at this time, we ask to pray for uh, specific intentions in your own life right now so think of those and offer those to god we continue to pray for our country in the aftermath of the recent election there is you know strong opinion on both sides and some interesting events this week at the capitol but it's a reminder to us to always let our actions do the talking more so than our words so we should live a life of honor and dignity and a respect towards one another and even though we might not like things that are happening around us, we may always provide an example and a model to the world on holiness and how we should act. And then we pray for other intentions, all those that are suffering and recovering from COVID, for a greater protection around the world from this pandemic, uh, for our church here at St. Brendan St. Anne's in New York and around the world. And we continue to pray for... Uh, all of you and your families. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything. Continue to watch over us, guide us, and protect us as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's a reminder, so you guys should be taking notes now. I know a couple of you guys did a really good job with that on the assignment last week. I could really see you guys doing that, and it was much better. So a special thank you uh, to those handful of students that are really taking this seriously and learning and making connections. This is what this is all about. And even though remote learning isn't a perfect system, there still is a great way to learn and to uh, move on to the next level of your achievement. So we thank you for that. So we're going to continue the same and just a quick review. There we are. We are on the last day of the Christmas season. And a beautiful feast day, which we'll look at here in just a second. And tomorrow we move on to the season of ordinary time once again. 
and we have a little over a month of green, which you'll see next week in our calendar. So how fast time can go. It seems like we were just starting Advent into Christmas and now tomorrow back into ordinary time. So today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, so a very beautiful feast. And we looked at this story a couple of classes ago in the preparation of our ultimate Advent Saint, John the Baptist, to prepare Jesus for this day and to ultimately prepare the world for what was about to happen. And we saw that very interesting and special event of the visitation where John the Baptist and Elizabeth's womb meets Jesus for the very first time and he leaps and his original sin is taken away. And so we go back to our question from last week and some of you guys had missed this one. It has actually a kind of a simple answer to it. How does the world celebrate Christmas differently than the Catholic Church? And the answer is actually in the color white there. All right, so the world celebrates Christmas on one day and the Catholic Church celebrates Christmas as a season. All right, so we are still celebrating it here. And I showed you guys the photos, right, of the stores and you guys can recognize this. You can still go into a CVS or another store and they have Christmas items on sale because they're trying to get rid of them and put them away. We should still have our things up celebrating this very, very beautiful season. And even though Valentine's Day is special and nice, we don't need to get ready for it yet because we are in the midst of the ultimate season of love right now, which is Christmas. And again, the comical getting ready for Easter, even though we're seasons away here in our liturgical calendar. So to look at our Saint of the Week, we have a saint that was celebrated uh, a week ago. A week and some change. Um, but just a quick review, sorry. We looked at the, the, the feast day of St. Stephen last week, right? And you guys did a good job in your homework connecting on that. What was you know significant about him? Again, it's those stones that are surrounding him. And that is how he um, was led to his death, by standing up for the faith. And again, why is it placed there? It's placed after the day uh, of Christmas, the day of great joy, because it's a reminder to us that if we live our faith the right way, there's going to be suffering that we have to experience, and we should ultimately suffer with joy. And once we can start to do that, we are going to really, really go to amazing places and our faith. And there is that beautiful image once again of Mary again showing the right way to celebrate this season and to look to Jesus who ultimately is previewing the cross, which is the way that we were saved uh, from our sins. So again, beautiful Christmas message and, and story. And we had all of those symbols there of these characters, which were a part of your homework. And just a quick review, how do they connect? The angels were messengers of God, all right, proclaiming a message. And it was to the shepherds. And we should be like the shepherds because we should come to see Jesus. All right, so once this pandemic uh, diminishes, you guys should definitely be coming back to the church and to celebrate the Eucharist and to celebrate the wonderful graces that are given to us through the uh, body and blood of Jesus. And then lastly, we have the three kings, and they are the symbol of those coming to worship Jesus, which we should ultimately be doing as well, praising him as priest, prophet, and king. And then we had that fancy vocabulary word, incarnation, God coming into the world through flesh to show us how to live and how to love. And so now here we go, the Saint of the Week. This was celebrated uh, last week on January 4th, and that is Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton. And this is another very special saint because she has New York City connections. So take a look here at the red star. This is it up above. This is actually actually at the very tip of Manhattan, and you could take the ferry there to go to Staten Island, then also to see the Statue of Liberty on Ellis Island. So maybe some of you guys have been down there, but this is her shrine right there. And then just a few blocks north, in the uh, shown by the gray star there, this is the Church of Saint Peter's, which was the actual spot. And you see that image right there of Jesus on the cross. This is where uh, Elizabeth would go and pray when she was younger. And this is where she eventually uh, felt that she wanted to become a baptized Catholic. 
And that is such a powerful thing because she went out and she started many, many Catholic churches in uh, the colonies there, uh, which was now the United States. So the eastern part of our country, she basically began religious and Catholic education. And so this class here of religious studies through CCD at St. Brendan's is basically an ancestor of her program. So if it wasn't for St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and other early catechetical saints, we have no idea what uh, our education system would be like, especially when it comes to the faith. So a beautiful saint to pray to. Again, she started the Catholic uh, school movement. And you guys are experiencing that here through this class. So say Elizabeth Ann Seton, pray for us. And help us to always pass on our faith to one another. And like I've told you guys before, you as future mothers and fathers and family leaders, you guys should be bringing your students up in the Catholic faith, which starts with you living your life right now. So we're going to continue now. I know it's been a nice little break uh, from our uh, Bible studies, because we looked at all those Christmas stories, which are really special. But we're going to go back. So we have a lot of things to cover here before the end of the this, of the year. And I want you guys to be ready for your next classes. So it's a reminder for you guys to get your assignments in every week. Some of you guys are not doing that, and you're going to fall behind and then not be promoted. So report cards are at the end of January. So we're going to pick up where we left off. And just a quick review from those initial stories. We had our first characters, Adam and Eve, and that big question how do I live for God? So do you guys remember those three things on there? The three connections to Adam and Eve that we should be living? Uh, very interesting if you guys could be able to list them. And here they are. All right. So number one, to enter into the Sabbath. So are you doing that? Uh, I see some of you guys every Sunday when I go to St. Brendan, St. Anne's. It's a beautiful thing to see you in person. And if you're not uh, someone of a family that feels comfortable going in person to church or to different places, you should be attending Mass online every week. You can go to YouTube and just uh, uh, search a weekly Mass, and you can participate in the Mass and the readings that way. Number two is to take care of the garden. How have we done that in the past week? And then number three, how have we lived in our family out of love? And then one day for you guys to lead a family out of love. And then what we had, unfortunately, again, is that first temptation and sin being tricked by the devil. And we had Adam and Eve both falling into that trap and being, uh, unfortunately, coming down with concupiscence, that attraction to sin and to evil things. And so original sin has that tarnish in our life. And the only way for us to remove that is through baptism. So that is why it's so very important to become baptized and to become an official member of the church, an official adopted member of God's kingdom. And then we looked at the story of, of God's consequences. Were they truly punishments or were they truly lessons on our ways to live? So that labor pains that were given to uh, Eve becomes the great uh, feeling of love. That was what she was taught. And then the toil and the sweat and those types of pains given to Adam led to the feeling of accomplishment and achievement. So both of these things are lessons that God is trying to teach them and us in our lives. And then we looked at that story of Cain and Abel. God asking Cain and Abel both to make a sacrifice. And then he accepted one and not the other because one was a pure and true sacrifice. And one wasn't really given with the best effort and uh, dedication. So it's a really great connection to all of us. How have we offered something to God in this past week? What is our offering? Are we giving him our lives and are we living lives of holiness? Or are we just kind of ignoring the way that he teaches us? So this is why the mass and coming to the church on Sundays is such an important part of our lives because we help to actually uh, answer this call of Cain and Abel, and that is to sacrifice our time and to offer that mass and the upcoming week to God. So there they are. We have the Sabbath leading the way to sacrifice. And so that's why we should enter that up. And today's uh, lesson now, we're going to move on to our next major story. And again, there's many, many stories in between these ones we're going to be looking at. But we're going to stick to the major ones this year in our study. So next story is the story of Noah. And I'm going to show you guys now um, 
a video here that I have on YouTube and you can always go back and look this up if you want to watch the whole thing. But for purposes of today, we're just going to look at the Noah story. All right. So I'm going to uh, show that here. Earth. No one lived righteously. Adam had committed one sin. The people now committed many sins. God said, I regret I made man on the earth. I will destroy everything that is alive. Sorry for the delay. I just want to make sure the volume was on. Nine generations, 1,400 years, had now passed and the world was filled with sin. Men made slaves of their fellow men. Will God ever have a family to love him and walk in obedience? But there was one man who practiced justice and always did the right thing. Though God would kill all the others on the earth, he decided to be gracious to this man and not kill him or his family. Noah, I am going to send a great flood of water upon all of the earth. Everything that has breath will die. In order to save yourself, your family, and the animals, you will build a big boat. Take with you on the boat one pair of every animal upon the face of the earth. You will take seven of all that are permissible to eat. I will tell you how to build the boat and what you will need to bring to prepare for the flood. Could Noah be the promised child, the one to destroy the works of Satan? Will he obey God, or will he too fail? God told Noah how big the boat must be to hold every air-breathing creature on the earth, along with the food they would eat. It made Noah sad to think of everyone perishing in the coming flood. So at every chance, he warned them to stop sinning. I am telling you one last time, God is going to destroy the world with a great flood. You must believe me and join me on the boat. Why would a loving God destroy his children? Because of sin. You must stop sinning and treat your neighbor with love and justice. You old fool. 120 years later, when the boat was finished, God caused animals to come to Noah from all over the world. Look, here come more animals. They come on their own like someone is calling them. Some are so strange looking. I didn't know such animals existed. Do you think there could be anything to what Noah says about God sending a flood? Not a chance. Where could you get enough water to flood the entire earth? There's not much room left. This is the last of them. Noah, it is time. Come into the boat with all of your family and the animals. It will soon be too late for all of those who refuse to stop sinning. God shuts the door to the boat. For seven days, nothing happened. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at the fools! Shut up in a big boat with all those animals in the middle of a dry plain, miles from any water. Yeah, I bet the lions have eaten them by now. They've been in there a week. But on the seventh day it began to rain, and water stored deep in the earth came to the surface. I have never seen anything like this. Do you think the crazy people in the boat could be right about God and kill everybody for their sins? Don't be ridiculous. God is love. How could one man be right and all our religious leaders be wrong? Before this time, it had never rained. The weather was always nice, and a mist came up from the earth to walk the ground. No one had ever seen or heard of rain. So many people thought Noah was crazy for thinking water was going to fall from the sky. But Noah believed what God said. I should have listened to Noah. What a fool I have been. God, save my baby! By the time the people realized Noah had been telling the truth, it was too late. 
It rained 40 days and nights until the water covered every mountain and valley. Every living soul breathed in that land, except those that were not yet with her. It would be more than a year before they would leave the land. I'll be glad when the water goes down and we can leave this boat. Finally, Noah released a dove and it came back with a branch in its mouth, which meant that somewhere there was a tree already growing. Later, he again released it, and that time it did not come back, which meant it had found a good place to live. Before long, the boat settled on a mountaintop called Ararat. Everyone came out to a new world, a world without sin. Noah built an altar and offered animal sacrifices to God. Though Noah was a just man, there was still sin in his heart. These blood sacrifices were offered to God in substitution for the lives of Noah and all his family. The animals represented the eight who should have died in the flood, but were spared by the grace of God. It was something like what God did in the garden when he killed animals to make coverings for Adam and Eve. I will give you a rainbow in the sky as a reminder that I will never again destroy the earth with water. You should have many children and scatter out to repopulate the whole earth. I will make animals to fear men. You may eat of any creature that is alive and crawling on the earth, just as you eat vegetables and herbs but you are not to eat the blood of any creature. Do not kill anyone. If someone is found to be guilty of killing another, then he is to be killed by other men. If a man sheds the blood of another man, then other men should shed his blood to pay for his crime, because the life is in the blood. All right, so there is the story of Noah. So truncated, shortened, of course. But you can kind of see what happened there as we jumped ahead. And it's not right after Cain and Abel is the story of, of Noah. But we have many, many years. And unfortunately, we have many, many people falling into the trap of sin. All right. So you can kind of see this picture here. I think this is really well. I'm going to enlarge this. This is a, a good depiction of the world. So you see them making fun of of Noah and what he was about to do. And if you're paying attention there to the timing of this, and this is where it gets a little crazy because Noah lives to be very old and uh, it doesn't really connect very well with the lifespans that we have now. But this is what God asked him to do was to make that enormous uh, boat and it would then fit all the animals to survive and to start the world anew. And so that is what he did all those years. The people had their chance. So did you notice that connection? It sounded kind of familiar to somebody else we had just talked about. John the Baptist warning people to change their ways and their life because something greater was coming. And so Noah was a prophet uh, describing what would happen next. And sure enough, we had the massive amount of rain. And that's hard to believe, right, that the world hadn't seen rain up until that time. But 40 days and 40 nights of rain. All right. So it kind of feels like that at times here in New York when it just rains for the whole day up and up through the whole weekend. But imagine that happening for 40 days straight. And because of that, the rain, of course, covered and then washed away everything that had been living outside of the ark. And now the world when can now start anew. And so how did Noah know it was time? So after the rain stopped, they had to just kind of, you know, float for a long time and he eventually set out those doves like you heard there on the video and one eventually brought back that branch to show that life was starting again now our plant and vegetation life and then god sent that ultimate sign which was the rainbow as a reminder and a symbol that this was to never happen again that he will never destroy the world due to a flood and so there it is. It's such a beautiful uh, symbol. And the dove is very, very symbolic and deep as well. All right. So you're going to see that symbol a lot in our faith. And we'll save that for a, a later time. And God's promise again 
is the same one that he gives to us, all right? And we have uh, God helping us in a lot of different ways, all right? So here we go. We have the covenant now that he is giving us. And this is the second one now in our story that we've heard about. So the covenant is a sign of God's enduring love and protection. And what was the first one that we had? Does anybody remember? It is the Sabbath day, all right? So that is the first covenant that God has given us. And then the second one was the symbol of a rainbow, all right? So there are the two. And again, this is an unbreakable ag agreement given by God that he is going to give this to us and he will always honor his word, all right? So this is the lesson of this story is God asked Noah to do something beyond challenging, and that is to create this massive boat and to corral all those animals, but it was ultimately just to trust in him and his plan. So that is the same challenge that you have and that I have in our lives, and that is to trust God, what he wants us to do, and to follow his teachings, and to live in holiness, to live in holiness. And that's what we are called to do, all right? So your assignment is going to be to Connect back to everything that you've heard up until this point uh, to do a little retell of the story in your own words and then to answer some questions. All right. So here we are. This is the next big story in the Bible. And we're just going to continue here on out from uh, until the end of the year, just learning more stories from the Bible. So you guys can deepen that knowledge and then we'll be making a lot of connections along the way. All right. So any questions? I'm here to answer them, of course. But have a great week. Happy uh, last day of Christmas. Merry Christmas. And then have a good return to ordinary time this week.